Are you concerned about pesticide residue on the produce from your grocery store? Did you know that you can grow in your home garden all 12 of the worst offenders for pesticide residue? Join me today as I discuss those dirty dozen and growing them in the home garden. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and yes, like you, I am concerned about the pesticides on the produce that I buy. That's a big reason why I grow a lot of my own food in my garden, and why I don't use pesticides in my garden. I practice integrated pest management, which means I do a lot to attract the beneficial predators. I use mechanical methods to pluck those pests off the plants, and I don't use those chemicals that could be harmful when used improperly. It probably doesn't surprise you that more than 70% of the produce that we get at the store has pesticide residue on it. Since 1991, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has been testing for the residue on our produce. And there's an organization called the Environmental Working Group that takes all the information that the USDA produces each year and tells us which of the produce are the worst offenders. This list, commonly known as the Dirty Dozen, are the 12 crops, the things that we buy at the grocery store that have the most pesticide residue on it. And what makes it so wonderful to have access to this list is that we, as gardeners, can recognize that they are all plants that we can grow in our garden. There are 46 food crops that the USDA tests on a regular basis, and each year the Environmental Working Group goes through the data to compile the list of the 12 worst offenders. Last year, they reviewed more than 46,000 samples from the USDA and the Food and Drug Administration to compile the list. And at number 12 are tomatoes. Now, tomatoes are probably a crop you're already growing in your garden. I think all of us would agree that a homegrown tomato tastes much better than anything that we can buy at the store. Well, Here's another reason for you to grow your own tomatoes. It's so that you don't get that pesticide residue when you buy a tomato at the store. Number 11 on the list is celery. Now, celery can be a bit challenging to grow. Not all of us have an easy time growing celery, but it is one of those plants that can be grown in most gardens. If you take the time and you prepare the soil and give it all the water that it needs, you can be harvesting celery in almost no time. And if you look at Baker Creek Seeds, they actually have a pink celery variety that adds a distinctive flavor you may not be used to. Celery from your garden can be grown with no pesticides. That's a great consideration. I grew about three dozen pepper plants in this long bed last year. I love eating peppers, I love using them in cooking, and I love that as number 10 on the list, I can have them in my garden with no concerns about the pesticide residue on them. Now, at number 10 are both sweet and hot chili peppers. Grow them in your garden. Most of us can. They like good soil, they like sun, they like hot conditions, and it's a wonderful addition to your garden. This is a semi-dwarf Bartlett pear tree that I'm growing in my little mini orchard. Pears are number nine in the dirty dozen. In my Zone 5B garden here in Colorado, pears actually do quite well. They might be a bit more challenging for some of the hotter regions, but if you can grow pear trees, do it. You'll be able to harvest your pears without those concerns of the pesticides and never have to go to the store again to get a wonderful fruit. This is a peach tree. Peaches are number eight on the list. I chose a contender variety. 
And one of the reasons I'm growing it in my mini orchard is because of the concern about the pesticide residue. With that fuzzy exterior, it can be difficult to wash all of it off before you eat it. So I prefer to grow my own. Now it can be challenging for some of us. Here in Colorado, we get late spring freezes that will often kill all the blooms, leading to no or maybe just a little harvest. It's only about once out of every three or four years that we really get a good harvest. And in those good years, I preserve all the peaches I can. I can the peaches, I make jellies and jams, and I enjoy that I can use such a wonderful tasting product with no concern over pesticides. At number seven on the list are cherries. Cherry trees are a great addition to a home orchard. For best pollination and best fruit production, you should try to have at least two. In my area, the sweet cherries just don't do well, and those are the ones that I actually prefer. So right now I don't have any cherries growing in this garden. If you've got the conditions that are beneficial for cherries, I strongly encourage that you grow that kind of tree. My cold, dry Colorado winters just means that if I do it, it's more challenging. And there is a spot over there that is a little more protected that I think I'll be adding a cherry tree to next year. They taste great at the store, but there's that chance of pesticide. Grow them in your own garden. They taste delicious, and you'll be happy that you did. Number six on the list are grapes. And I've put in this arch specifically to support the grapes that I'll be growing on both sides. The type of grapes that we're getting at the store, the eating grapes, are the ones that we probably want to be growing in our garden. Now, you, you can definitely grow the wine grapes, but as far as the eating grapes are concerned, you need some type of trellis. I'm growing up this hoop, but you can also have the standard horizontal trellis to support your grapevines. They do take a little bit of space, but it's a great plant to grow in your garden, and most regions can support the growth of grapes. To avoid the pesticide residues that you're going to get at the store, find a variety that does well in your area with a taste that you really like and add it to your garden plan. We've reached the top five of the Dirty Dozen, and these five really are dirty. More than 90% of the samples of these five were contaminated with two or more pesticides. If you're going to grow anything on this list, you might want to target these top five. And at number five are apples. Now, this is a dwarf Cox Orange Pippin apple. And I've got a couple other apple trees behind me. This is actually the one that I prefer to grow the most of because they do so well in my region. And I can harvest apples and not have to worry about the consequences of being in the top five of the dirty dozen. If you can support the growth of apples, and you should have at least two apple trees to get fruit, it's something that deserves a place in your garden and doesn't have to be just in the vegetable garden. Consider growing them as a landscape tree. They can be a beautiful tree with beautiful blossoms. Grow them in your front yard, on your side yard, and back in your garden space as well. Nectarines are number four on the list. Now, I don't eat a lot of nectarines, and like peaches, they can be a challenging tree to grow for me in my garden. So I haven't chosen to grow them yet, and I actually have no plans to grow them, though that may change in the future. But if you like nectarines, and you live in an area that can support the growth, rather than buying them at the store, grow them yourselves. And just like the peaches, they can be preserved in a number of different ways. Nectarines, even though they're not in my garden, might deserve a place in yours. Kale and collard and mustard greens have the spot at number three. And these are incredibly easy plants to grow in most gardens. And I grew all three in this bed last year. 
These are the kind of plants that you can actually get multiple crops of. They don't mind the cold weather, so you can grow them in the spring and you can also grow them in the autumn. You can harvest them almost every day once they reach appropriate size. And with every leaf that you eat, there's no pesticide residue on it. One of my favorite garden plants that I grew in that other bed and I grew in this bed, as well as many other beds in my garden, is so easy that it's almost a no-brainer. You should definitely be growing this plant. It's easy, it tastes good, and at number two, spinach is a plant that you should avoid buying at the store. Spinach is so hardy in cold weather that if you have a cold frame or often just a hoop covering a bed, you can be growing it all winter long. Put some shade over it, you can even grow it in the summer. Spinach is one of those plants that we buy too often at the store. But as number two, you should consider avoiding that from now on and just grow it in your own garden. The number one crop of the Dirty Dozen is one that I've been growing for many years, more than 20 years, and literally the same plant for more than 20 years. And number one are strawberries. And strawberries are so easy to propagate that even though I've lived in different houses and had different gardens over those 20 years, I always pot up and then transplant some of those strawberries so that I start my garden with the same plant that I've had all of these years. Few things are better than to pick that fresh strawberry on a summer day and eat it on the spot. In fact, a lot of my strawberries never make it to the kitchen. This last year, I added three new varieties to my garden. In addition to the strawberries that I'm growing in this bed, I have some ground covers over there and I'm growing in a couple other spots in my garden so that I can actually get enough strawberries to go in and use them. I'm also growing strawberries in my green stock vertical planter. I like making strawberry jam. You can freeze the strawberries and make them into a number of different desserts. And I like to dehydrate the strawberries and eat them as a snack. It's a wonderful plant to grow with a wonderful harvest potential. Even though it might be a little challenging for some new gardeners, it's definitely worth it. And as the most contaminated fruit that we're going to buy in the store, it deserves a place in your garden. You might not have as big a garden space as I do to attempt to grow all or most of the dirty dozen. But even if you just grow one or two or three of these crops, well, then that lessens your exposure to those pesticides because you're growing them in your garden rather than buying them at the store. And there are many reasons why we choose the crops that we want to grow in our garden. Well, now, adding the concerns about pesticides should make the list of how you choose your plants. And to see how I choose some of the other plants in my garden, well, go ahead and watch this video next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>